What is up, my butter biscuits? Y'all, I got a lot to apologize about before we get into this video. So I apologize for apologizing too much. Y'all know how I am. So one, I apologize for the fan. There's going to be a humming in the background. It is literally 100 degrees in this garage right now. And my boobs are literally already sweating. I know TMI, but it's just like, ugh, it's so much. I think I'm going to be filming. If you guys have been checking out my TikToks re recently, I'm going to be filming my um, summer videos inside my room with my little Starbucks cup collection setup that I got going on for TikToks because it is just way too hot in this garage. And I tried with the ac and there's no insulation so it doesn't keep the coolness in you know what i'm saying also another thing that i'm going to be apologizing about is that i don't have a full face of makeup on right now y'all know whenever i do a my thoughts and opinion style video i like to have like a full face of makeup but it's just way too hot right now it really is i was like i am so over it i'm gonna just slap on some foundation and brows and just call it a day because oh it's so hot right now the third and final apology, or maybe this is the fourth apology by now, is I do apologize that I'm probably going to hurt a lot of people's feelings within this video because y'all know how I feel about Rem Beauty. And this is where we're going to be talking about chapter two. And this one right here to me is just so... It's so boring. I know how it is whenever I talk about anybody's favorite celebrity, you know, or favorite influencer or whatever, and I have a difference of opinion that is not, you know, a popular opinion, I get attacked like crazy. Y'all know when I did my first thoughts and opinions video about the first, you know, initial launch of Rem Beauty, I was like, oh my God, this has to be the most boring makeup brand that I have ever seen. And the chapter two collection is making me say, wow, this is even more boring than I thought. I am so sorry, but I genuinely feel Rem Beauty and Ariana Grande are just really... Not not doing it for me when it comes down to the makeup but at the end of the day we all have a difference of opinion and that's okay i know this day and age oh my god everybody has to just be you know on the same wavelength and think the same or else people go crazy and i'm like i am so sorry but i'm sticking to my opinions that's it i really don't take care if i get hate mail my dms are open feel free to call me anything you want i really don't care i just feel like we have to talk about this makeup collection because i'm like it's ariana grande like number one pop star in the world and she's coming out with boring 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 just like cheap looking stuff to me and that's just my opinion but we're gonna go over the full chapter two collection i do apologize also oh my god that's a fifth apology i do apologize that i'm late on this too because i did want to do this video before the collection actually came out however i am late i've been so busy trying to like keep up with tiktok and ig reels make sure you guys follow me over there if you guys want to see i'm doing way more like makeup related content over there like doing little you know uh kind of like what well, i was gonna say trials but like little reviews and like you know little trends and stuff like that so make sure you guys check me out over there um let's go ahead and get into this video make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up i would really appreciate that and let's go ahead and get into it all right y'all the first thing that i want to talk about within this collection are going to be the eyeshadow palettes because i am so sorry but these 100 remind me of covergirl palettes y'all can get the same stuff from covergirl for obviously a much cheaper price the component of this y'all know i literally have said it before in my previous video about the initial launch the component of this to me is just so blah so boring so basic like there's really nothing too iconic about it on top of that too i just don't like the layout of the shadows i do feel like it looks really really cheap honestly it's giving me covergirl vibes like honestly go to the covergirl section of walmart y'all can see in there that this palette looks like that it just looks so cheap and these retail for 24 dollars and on top of that too let's go ahead and talk about the color story so this one right here is like the midnight or no sorry this one right here is the groovy baby let's go ahead and get into the um go go boots and the uh what is this one smitten kitten out of all three of these you guys i am so sorry this is why i say i understand i'm gonna get attacked i get it i just feel like they are so boring so lackluster so dull so dry like just everything has been done before everything that i look at within this palette i'm just so completely uninspired by it because i'm just like like come on y'all like honestly i really don't get like this brand if i had to choose one y'all know i literally always do this like if i had to choose one i would choose the cement kitten at least i feel like with that one i could create a cute little look on but the first two the groovy baby and the go go boots i'm just like it's just so dull and so boring to me and 24 dollars look 24 dollars really isn't that bad of a price but I do feel like you could get the same type of thing from CoverGirl for like what 11 bucks 12 bucks you know what I'm saying so why spend it on this on top of that, I'm going to keep on emphasizing on this. I do obviously have much higher expectations of Ariana Grande only because she does have the access to so many resources. I know that you guys hate me talking about Jeffree Star, but let's go ahead and take a look at his palettes. You know what I'm saying? Look at all the effort that goes into the component of those palettes, the colors, like, you know, even the imprints on the palette. Like, y'all, he does not have as much money as Ariana Grande. She is so rich, so famous. On top of that, too, she could have, like, billions of dollars of investors within her brand because she is obviously so successful that they're going to be willing to take in you know a risk and invest in her because of her popularity and because of her fame and because of her musical talents you know what i'm saying so when it comes down to a brand like this and i just see this complete boring dullness i'm like 
oh my gosh, y'all, I want to be wowed. I feel like if a celebrity is coming out with a brand, they're going to have to do a lot to like win me over only because I know that they have the money and resources to come out with something amazing. And when you come out with eyeshadow palettes like this, it's just it's just boring. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry if I hurt your guys' feelings by this because I understand a lot of people. A lot of people, I feel like, can't separate the person from the makeup. If we are talking about, say, for example, I've said this before with Jeffree Star. Look, as a person, we all know how he is. But when you take a look at his actual palettes, like, honestly, some of the concepts are just so cool, so outside of the box. And, like, people aren't doing that in the industry. You know what I'm saying? So if you could separate the person, Jeffree, from Jeffree Star Cosmetics, then obviously you'd have a different outlook and be like, you know what? He, uh, you know, on one side is, uh, but then his makeup is, ooh, you know what I'm saying? I feel like with Ariana Grande, people can't separate that too. Like, they love Ariana Grande, so anything that she comes out with, they just have to love. And I'm sorry that's not me. I really do enjoy Ariana Grande's music, but... Her makeup so far, is it's just not for me. It's really not for me. Like, these eyeshadow palettes are just so boring. I'm really not going to go too much in depth on the lashes right here. They retail for $16. They're like whatever basic to honestly i literally only pay like i won't ever pay no more than ten dollars for lashes ten dollars is really pushing it y'all like i buy my lashes from namies and normally i get them for like six bucks so i'm really not about to spend no sixteen dollars on top of that too i just feel like they're you know they're not bad they're not good they're just kind of like whatever that's really my thoughts and opinions on the lashes right there but speaking of lashes she is also going to be coming or it's already out now um a lash and brow boosting serum this retails for forty dollars obviously this does have a little bit more of a high price point but obviously Obviously compared to what's out there on the market some lash and brow serums go up to like hundred and fifty dollars they could be very very pricey this right here I don't really have too many opinions about because honestly I don't know how it works I obviously feel like if this does work and people um review it and have like crazy results with it hey maybe I will pick it up because honestly my lashes are kind of like falling out these days so maybe this is something that might work I don't want to judge like a product by its cover you know what I'm saying as far as the like um how would you say it like how well it works because obviously I don't know you know what I'm saying like, I'm not over here calling her eyeshadows like, you know, non-pigmented because I don't know. But obviously, looking at the color story of them, I could clearly say I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? I think it looks boring. But I won't be talking about, obviously, the quality because I'm not going to be picking up any of these products because I just feel like they're so blah. But the Lash and Brow says, so the Lash and Brow Serum, I do feel like it's one of those things if I saw, like, a crazy amount of reviews and people are, like, raving about it, maybe I will try it. Because, honestly, 40 bucks is really not too bad of a price point for a Lash or Brow Serum considering, you know, obviously what's out there on the market and what is you know like y'all i just saw this one like i forget the name of it but it's like in a gold tube they sell it at sephora and it's like a hundred dollars i'm like i but i keep saying the reviews are really good on it but i'm not trying to spend no hundred dollars you know what i'm saying Anyways, the next thing we're going to be going, blah, 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 the next thing we're going to be talking about is the calming face mist. Y'all know that like no matter what, okay, I, I know it's stupid to a lot of people because so many people really don't care for a face mist or a setting spray. I do. I really just I enjoy a face mist. This once again, twenty four dollars right here. Not too bad of a price point because obviously a lot of competitors out there go up to like thirty two dollars. Some go even up to thirty six dollars for a face mist or a setting spray. So this right here may be like one of the things that I might try because y'all know I. I do love a setting spray. I do love a face mist. Honestly, I wear so many powder products that I just feel like it's necessary to have some type of face mist to kind of like bring life back to my skin because when I do set my face, I set it a lot, y'all, because I'm fat and I get really sweaty, you know what I'm saying? So I just have to set it. But then when I set it too much, then I feel like my face does obviously look powdery. It does look a little bit dry. So putting a face mist or setting spray on top of it obviously does bring my skin back to life. So this is a product right here that I obviously probably, you know, if I was going to try the brand, I probably would pick this up because i'm like you know what no matter how bad a face mist is like everyone always talks trash about the mario badesco and i'm like i still like that it's like whatever spray it on whatever it does its job as far as like making my powder kind of melt into my skin you know what i'm saying so this product right here i'm just kind of like eh, about the next product on the list right here which i believe is new to the brand correct me if i'm wrong but i don't remember seeing this in the first launch is the metallic gel eyeshadows so these right here when i first had saw these inside the container i was kind of like oh okay maybe i would be interested in those because i do like kind of something like this you know what i'm saying like a still still stila eyeshadow it's just very easy to use and i thought oh maybe this will be like that but in a pot you know what I'm saying so you can just use it with a brush and be easy to go however when I saw the swatches I was just really unimpressed I was just kind of like mm, these retail for $16 so obviously Stila is a little bit more expensive but I'm just kind of like y'all I hope I find the picture of the swatches because I was going through my screenshots right now and I didn't take a screenshot I saw the swatches on somebody's Instagram or somebody's TikTok I forget where I saw it and I really do hope I can find the screenshots of the swatches because as soon as I saw the swatches I'm just like these are very 
very lackluster. Like, honestly, I just, I wouldn't get any of them. The colors do look cute. Like, when you're looking at them here in the pictures, I'm like, oh my gosh, that orange one to me looks super cute. Like, I'm like, that's something that I would wear. And the cranberry color one, too, I feel like that one looks beautiful as well, too. But then when I saw the swatches, I'm just like... It's just not for me, but here's my thing about it is, and I want to comment on this specifically because I know a lot of people just get it so twisted. Look, if you guys like something that's a little bit more dull as far as like it's not over the top like crazy shimmer, then maybe this is for you, but I'm the type of person, y'all know how I am, about like Pat McGrath eyeshadows. Like I like over the top shimmer. I like over the top pigment. Like I love Stila because it obviously has such an intense amount of sparkle as to where I feel like these don't, but maybe you guys like something that's a little bit more dull. This is where I say like everybody's difference of opinion, like people really need to get over it because at the end of the day y'all may not like yellow and i love yellow and that's not the end of the world you know what i'm saying i may like something that's so over the top pigmented you guys might like something that's a little bit more toned down and a little bit more natural as to where if i'm going to be wearing makeup i want it to be seen you know what i'm saying so i feel like with these i'm just kind of bored with them too i'm just kind of like oh, okay like the colors look cute, but the swatches are just like, mmm, they look a little bit boring. You know what I'm saying? The next product up here on the list, we have the Cooling Blurring Under Eye Balm. This one is actually sold out. And see, this is why I like actually doing my thoughts and opinions videos before the collection comes out. So obviously I can get it out there before it sells out or whatnot, obviously. So that way we can have conversations about it. But this is actually already just sold out. So it says Cooling Balm Blurs Imperfections and Visibly Reduces Dark Circles. So this right here is sold out. So a lot of people must have saw something within this product and been like, oh my gosh, like, you know what? this seems cool it doesn't have the price right here because it does say that it like it just says notify me but i will put the price right up here honestly this is one of those products right here that i obviously can't comment too much on because it's like something that i would have to see a review of and be like oh, okay yeah i can see results with it but i just feel like you know Good for her for coming out with a different type of product, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, a lot of brands just come out with, like, makeup-related products. She's coming out with the Lash Serum and an under-eye balm, which I do think is really cool because, obviously, an under-eye balm can be good because a lot of people do get dry patches underneath their eyes, so they do like to put on an eye balm or an eye cream before they put on their concealer so that way it doesn't look so dry, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, I'm not going to be very opinionated on that because I really just don't know... I don't know how it works. You know what I'm saying? I would have to see results on that. I feel like when you talk about makeup related products as far as like blushes and eyeshadows and lip colors and single eyeshadows, obviously I can be way more opinionated about that because you get to judge the color. You get to judge the color story. You get to judge the packaging. You get to judge the swatches. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Now we're going to go into the eyeshadow gloss right here. So this retails for $16. Look, it's just an eyeshadow gloss. I will tell you guys, honestly, way back in the day, I used to do so many grunge looks when I worked at MAC. Honestly, I would just use a regular old clear tube lip gloss and put that on my lips and that is it. You know what I'm saying? And you could sheer that down. Actually, this is what I used to do way back in the day. I would get a lip gloss and I would use a MAC mix me mixing medium and kind of sheer it out so that way it's not like sticky. Do you know what I'm saying? Because y'all, if you put a gloss straight up on the lid, it's going to be really sticky, especially if you have a little bit of a hood like me um so this to me right here honestly i would just use kind of like a little bit of a mixing medium and um a you know clear gloss because i feel like it gets the job done you know but 16 dollars for a eye gloss really not too bad but i don't really correct me if i'm wrong y'all on my discover page and on my for you page i really don't see too many glossy eyes anymore like do you guys feel like that's a dying trend do you feel like a lot of people still do it in my personal opinion i honestly can't even remember the last time that i saw it me personally back in the day i used to like to have like a grungy look so i would wear it every now and then because it does look a little bit dirty you know what i'm saying that was like my vibe back then but i would never wear that product now because honestly y'all like my eyes just get really creasy so i'm like i would not wear that but i don't know if that's in anymore but that's a product right there to me that i just would never even purchase y'all i completely apologize i'm kind of backtracking right here i just realized that i forgot to read the description for the eye balm and i do feel like that is important to read because obviously that has or is going to have some type of skincare ingredient within it so i do want to read that so that way you guys know um so it says energize the eye area with this botanical powered cooling balm that offers results instantly and over time go to cola it's sentinella asiatica help soothe and blur imperfections in the delicate under eye area while caffeine helps melt away the look of puffiness and reduce the appearance of dark circles for a brighter eyed look mushroom extract an antioxidant powerhouse helps uh, protect against free radicals it's lightweight and cushiony texture with a cooling sensation melts into all skin tones and can be worn alone or used as a primer before makeup to create a smooth canvas for application sorry i just wanted to touch up on that because i was like thinking duh i didn't read the description for that i don't really feel like i need to read the description for like you know any of the makeup products because i'm like 
we know how an eyeshadow works like you know what i'm saying anyways i wanted to read that but actually um after reading this it does sound like it does have pretty good ingredients inside of it i do believe within jeffree star skin too his had um mushroom underneath it i feel like that's kind of like a ongoing trend here with like current skincare products right here this product right here to be honest with you like after reading the description maybe i would pick that up too you know what i'm saying i do feel like recently i like underneath my eyes have been getting kind of dry so maybe this is a product that i would pick up i should have probably read the description first but obviously like i said it's one of those things like i would like to see reviews of it first rather than just like buying it without knowing you know what i'm saying all right y'all the last product on the list right here are the cheap cheap oh my gosh cheek and lipstick cheap oh my gosh cheek and lipsticks um these right here um there's actually 10 shades of them they're actually all sold out literally every single shade so a lot of people must have really liked these i do feel like a lot of like younger people don't realize that way back in the day my nana for example she would use her her uh, lipstick as a blush that's just like the thing that you do back in the day so a lot of people i saw online talking about this oh my gosh it's so cool you could use it as both and i'm like you could literally use a lipstick as both. You know what I'm saying? I would use a liquid lipstick as both, but a regular cream lipstick, yeah, 100% you could use as a blush. Anyway, so these right here actually do seem really, really cute, I will say. I do feel like it is pretty cool that they're only $18, and obviously you can use it as both. So I do wonder how the pigmentation is going to be on it. I'm going to go ahead and read the description of this because obviously this is a new product to the line. So it says, manifest your own eclipse with a flush of hydrating luminous color. Chi 2 is always more fun than one. Grab this two-in-one balm in an easy-to-use stick when you want a healthy flush of natural looking color lum, uh, looking luminous color on your cheeks and lips infused with ultra hydrating ingredients like jojoba seed and grapefruit extracts this creamy formula is innovatively breathable and melts upon application for a comfortable second skin finish you guys know recently i said um within my new makeup drops or are they bops or flops i kind of want to like as soon as i get my second ipl i'm gonna try out um more cream blushes y'all know for the longest period of time this is a product that i would 100 steer away from because with my broken capillaries right here any type of blush just gets completely pulled off it pulls off my foundation and it just looks patchy and separated so it's something for the longest period of time that i wouldn't want to wear but i have seen a small improvement with my first ipl so i think after my second ipl i will see more results and maybe a product like this would be really cute to try I do like I do want to know how the sizing of this is like I would be really curious like to see how you would use it for your lips and for your cheeks I know obviously say for example if it is a little bit more big then you could just put it on your cheeks and then use a brush to put it on your lips I get that so I do wonder how she did the sizing of this but I just want to say as far as like component and packaging like it's just I don't know. It's just so boring. You know what I'm saying? I think the product itself is obviously cute. I do think it's cute that she's labeling it as both. I mean, obviously, like I said, let's keep it real. You could use any creamy lipstick as a blush and as a lipstick, of course. Um, but I do think it's obviously cute that she's like, you know, saying, hey, you could use this for lip and um, for cheek colors right here. Obviously, everyone loved this product right here, y'all. All 10 shades sold out. And I do obviously want to comment, too, that $18, I feel like, is a very fair price. That's one thing that I guess I can say about Rem Beauty is that the pricing is pretty fair. I do feel like it is affordable. However, I'm just expecting so much more from Ariana Grande. I feel like the brand as a whole, the aesthetic is just... It's just not my vibe, y'all. And I really am sorry if that offends you, if that bothers you. Like, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, I got to keep it real with my opinions. This is a brand that if I literally, if I saw it in Sephora or if I saw it in Ulta, I'm going to just immediately walk past it. Even if the products are honestly, like, kind of good because it just looks so dull, looks so boring. Like, it just doesn't call my name. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I like cutesy products. I like cute packaging. And, like, I know, obviously, at the end of the day, so many people are like, who cares about the packaging? But I just feel like, let's keep it real. Everything that Ariana Grande is coming out with right here, every other brand in the world has has it you know what i'm saying so obviously the packaging is going to be a key selling point because it's something that's going to draw you in you get me but anyways my final thoughts and opinions about the rem beauty chapter 2 is it's kind of boring if i had to pick some products on the list i would say that i would be interested in trying the um cheek and lipstick um the face mist of course and maybe the under eye cream but honestly y'all these are just things that i would just probably like purchase if i like had a surplus of money or maybe if say for example some brands are like oh we want to send you a pr package pick your products like those are the products that i would pick i wouldn't go out of my way to just spend my money you know what i'm saying on this like i said unless i had like a ten thousand dollar like gift card then of course i'm gonna you know you know what let me try this let me try that might as well just spend you know money you know what i'm saying but yeah um this to me though really overall if i had to just describe it with one word it's just boring i don't know y'all that's just my thoughts and opinions on it you guys can let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything and i'll catch you guys on my next video peace out girl scout